Hi, I'm Kaylee with Expats Everywhere and I sit down with one of the top mortgage brokers for foreigners in all of Portugal. I ask him the top questions that you should know before getting a mortgage and what his clients commonly ask. Here's what he says. Rafael, let's jump right in. Can I secure a mortgage in Portugal with income from abroad and not being a resident here? Absolutely, Kaylee. You don't need to um, declare income tax in Portugal or uh, be a resident in Portugal or have a visa to access credit here. Uh, you, just, you just need to show your uh, income tax from abroad in the US, the 1044, I mean, England, the P60, etc. Uh, other documents like pay stubs and bank statements, the bank wants to make the bank reconciliation of these amounts, so uh, credit report. With these documents, we can pre approve you with the banks uh, and then you can start your search for properties here. Okay, and what are the current interest rates? Well, the, the Federal Reserve and the European Central Bank are, the market is expecting them to decrease rates in the second semester of 2024 and during 2025, so in 1% or 2%. Uh, anticipating this movement, the banks already, in Portugal, had, had already fixed the rates in the level of 3%, so it's much more cheaper than in the US or or England or Canada. And are you a mortgage broker for the entire market or explain what a mortgage broker does, what you do? Yes, Kaylee, I am an economist MBA, with MBA in finance. I've been working in the financial market for 30 years now, I'm 50. I used to work for uh, big companies. I became an international treasury manager. And because of this job, I live and work in several countries before Portugal, from Argentina, Brazil, Colombia to Belgium. And now I'm, I'm in Portugal in my seventh year. Here I have the license and the certification to be a whole market mortgage broker. So I work with the main banks in Portugal. Based on the financial details of the clients, I give different proposals from, the, from these banks. The client will choose one. Uh, we will move forward. Of course, uh, me and my team will be beside the client and following up the, the client during all the process, the process. And after the deed, we receive a success fee commission from these very banks. So there is no money charged to the clients. Okay, great. And what are some key criteria for eligibility and what can increase someone's chances of approval? Yes, anyone from any part of the world can finance a property in Portugal. Either having a regular job with pay stubs or a company which distributes dividends, pro labors or profits on a monthly basis. This is very important. Uh, in, it has to be credit in your in your personal checking accounts on a monthly basis and a 25% of the purchase price. 20% for down payment, a minimum down payment of 20% and 5% for closing costs, basically taxes. To enhance the likelihood of approval, uh, it's uh, the banks here will calculate the, the debt to net income ratio. So uh, if you can pay off some, uh, some loans that you have with monthly, with large monthly payments, it will help you uh, get more, more credit here, okay? Uh, let me give you an example of how the, bank, the, the banks will do this. Uh, let's suppose your Equifax shows, they do this in a monthly, pay, in a monthly basis, so let's suppose you pay per month 1,000 euros, uh, your Equifax shows this, that you pay 1,000 euros or equivalent in dollars for a mortgage in the US, and you're gonna apply for another one for another 1,000, to give a, a simple example. So it will be 2,000 per month. To approve a 2,000 per month payment, I need a net salary of four. So this ratio of 50% is always, so 4,000 or more. To, so it will not surpass 50%. Okay. Let's run through the whole process from start to finish. What does it look like? Sure. Uh, usually I, I initiate with a one hour video interview with the client where I'm going to simulate mortgage scenarios. I'm going to explain all closing costs and taxes. I'm going to answer all the questions the client might have. So everything you need to know before start, start investing in the, in, the, in the country. Then I send a list of documents that basically are six passports, income taxes, pay stubs, bank statements, credit report, score. Uh, an employment verification letter. With these documents, I can pre-approve you. This is very quickly, in one week, I can pre-approve you. And, and then you can start your search knowing how much you can get with the bank. So this is the best uh, sequence. The, the best steps are pre-approve first and then search properties later.
Okay. What are typical terms and rates? And a big question is what's better here, fixed or variable? Yes, Kaylee. Usually the banks can offer three types of rates. So it's uh, variable, fixed, or mixed. Okay. Mm -hmm. The variable is uh, you'll be indexed to the arrival that is like the Fed fund in Europe. Uh, so we'll be floating with the market uh, with, with economic circumstances, let's say. So I, don't, I usually don't recommend this rate. I would prefer the fixed rate. The fixed rate will have a perfect, perfect cash flow for the entire period, so you can program yourself. It's a little more costly, but you can uh, uh, have a, an idea of the complete cash flow. And today, the mixed rate, a lot of clients are, are asking for the mixed rate, where you have the fixed rate first for 2, 3, 5, 10, 15 years, and then it becomes variable. Uh, what you can do in this process, in this process is uh, when it becomes variable, you can make a partial or total amortization with a lower penalty. You can uh, try to shop the banks again to see if there is any other option uh, in another bank and migrate to this bank if necessary. There are some costs to do this, but uh, we make the math and you see if it's worth it. Uh, and, and you can also fix it again in a, in a better rate, in a, can lock in with a better rate in the future. Okay. After pre-approval, how does someone secure a property in Portugal? Okay. Usually in Portugal, uh, they, sign, they, they ask you to sign a promissory contract against paying 10% directly to the seller, not to an escrow account. So I don't like this MO very, very much. Uh, and then after that, after signing the, the contract, they go to the, um, to the banks for the approval and the appraisal. I would prefer that you First, get the pre-approval with us. Then once you, once you find the property, you sign the promissory contract with a small deposit, like 2,000, 3,000, a small deposit, uh, and ask for a 15-day period until you can uh, check with the banks uh, everything and, and make the appraisal of the property. After the appraisal report of the property, then you can pay the remaining 10%. Because you need to know that all documents are in order before paying a large amount to to, to the seller. Okay, of course you can put a clause to to get the reimbursement, but I would prefer that you pay later. And then you have to ask for more 45 days for all the bureaucratic uh, process, process until the end. So in the end it will be like two a two month process. And you have to and you have to negotiate these terms very well. So when you put a when you put in an offer, you just you just don't show uh, don't say just the, the amount. You're going to say my, uh, my offer is this. I want 15 days for uh, for, to have the appraisal, then I will complete the, 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 the down payment and I need an extra 45 days until the deed. If you don't negotiate these terms, you might uh, in, uh, disobey. If you disobey the, the contract, you might be um, in a risk of losing the, the down payment. Mm -hmm. Okay? So All it's right. very important. Yes. So in this two month time frame, do, like from CPCV to signing the deed, does someone need a person to represent them during this frame, time frame? Mm -hmm. Even if you are, if you live in Portugal, I would recommend you to have a lawyer to, uh, to help you along the way. But especially if you're a non-resident, you need someone to represent you here. The lawyer has to do five important steps here. First, help you with the promissory contract, uh, inserting the clauses to protect you, etc. Then open a bank account here. You're going to need a bank account here and via power of attorney, the lawyer will open a bank account for you. Uh, the certifi certification of documents, some banks will require certification of documents or either you, you apostille this in the US or abroad or you use the lawyer, it's much, much more practical to use the lawyer. Uh, more close to the deed, the lawyer will go to the finances to get the tax papers for the IMT, the transfer tax and the stamp duty for the, for the, the property. Uh, they do that, they do this one, one day before the closing because the papers, they expire in 24 hours. So. On the following day, the lawyer will be there. You don't need to be there. You can be present, but you don't need to. And the lawyer will uh, pay the taxes, pay the deed, uh, sign the closing, and, and leave with the keys and the documents of the property. If you want to, rent, to, put it to, to start renting right away, you can do this, or, or the keys will be with the lawyer until you come, and, and then you go to your new house. Yeah. Let's run an example scenario. So let's say there's a property, 250,000. What would be costs and expenses on that type of property? Perfect. For, two, for the property of 250,000, it's exactly 20% down payment plus 5% in closing costs, basically taxes. So 20% for down payment would be 50,000, right? 
the 5%, I usually divide the closing costs into the mortgage closing costs, how much you spend to, to get a mortgage with a bank, and the property closing costs that you're going to pay with or without a, without a mortgage. If you pay in cash, you're going to pay the property closing costs. That, that is the more so, salty part, let's say. Yeah. Uh, mortgage closing costs, around 1,000 euros for the appraisal and other fees, and the stamp duty for the mortgage that is 0.6% of the loan amount. So in this case, 0.6% of 200 is 1,200. So mortgage closing costs, 2,200. Uh, property closing costs, IMT, if it's a, a primary house is 7,500, if it's a secondary house, 8,500, around that. And you have to pay another, um, another uh, tax here that is the stamp duty for the property. So it's 0.8% of the purchase price. So 0.8% of 250,000 is 2,000. So in the end, closing cost will be 12,700 or 13,700 plus the down payment. Okay, so a large chunk right there at the beginning that you have to be mindful of, right? Yeah, yeah. The closing costs are expensive, but and has not they they are they have nothing to do with the annual property tax that is very affordable in Portugal. For example, the aliquota for annual property tax is 0.3% to 0.45%, depending on the city. And you don't pay on the selling price, let's say. Over, uh, you pay this on the, uh, based on the face value of the documents that usually are not updated. So uh, probably for a 250,000 property, you pay over 100. And then it will be like, let's say, 0.4% of 100, so 400 euros per year. Okay. That you can pay with a 10% discount in the beginning of the year, or if it's a large amount, you can split in three tranches, one in the beginning of the year, one in the middle, one in the end of the year. And earlier you spoke about ages. So is there an age group that is or is not eligible to get a mortgage? Yeah, the age limit here, Kaylee, is 75 years old. So let me give you an example. If you are 45 or, or, or younger, you can benefit of the maximum term 30 years. If you are 50 like me, you have 25 years only. But when you have more, when you are more than 50 years old, you can and you give a, and you give more down payment, uh, like 25 percent. You can increase, extend the, the term in five years, so you can go up to the limit of 80 years old. Okay. okay. But it depends on the bank. So that's why it's great to to shop the banks to to check the offers because they can give you different periods, different rates, uh, the need of of life insurance, etc. Okay, so that leads me to my next question. It's better than to shop the banks or do all of them give the same rate? Oh, for sure. For sure you should uh, shop the banks because they can give you different uh, scenarios, different uh, terms, uh, rates, waiver the life insurance or not. So it's very important to do this. And if you go with us, we can go directly to these banks. We know the best banks already. We know the best branches and managers to, to help you. And then if someone gets a mortgage, can they use that amount towards renovations or is that separate? It, it will be like this, Kaylee. Let's suppose you are approved for a certain amount. With this pre-approval, you start your search and then you can use the way you want for, for example, one, uh, used properties or, or, or uh, new properties that are ready that has all the documents and, and you can make the closing right away. Or you can buy a property plus renovation. So, for example, if it's 200,000, you can use 150 for the house, 50 for the renovation. You can balance that. You just have to uh, show a budget to the bank uh, for the appraisal to, to, to check that. And or, or uh, you can also uh, buy land plus construction from zero. Or if you have the land, you can construct from zero uh, up to 80%. So, uh, First get the pre-approved, then you can use the, the money, the pre-approved money, the way you prefer. Okay. And do you help investors and those looking at commercial properties as well? Yes. Usually when you buy from abroad, you buy it as a secondary house. So a secondary house, uh, you are allowed to explore it as an investment. So you can, put, uh, you can uh, start renting right away uh, with no problem. And then the tenants will be covering the, the, the mortgage payments for you. For commercial properties, it's a different credit line. It's more like a leasing, so it will be a shorter term, higher rates, and higher down payment. But it's also doable. If you want commercial properties, you also can do that. So you're able to do both? Yeah, Kelly, sure. Do the banks allow prepayments? Yeah, sure. You can amortize uh, partially or totally at any time, okay? 
the only difference is that we have a little penalty here. Mm. So during the variable rate period, you pay 0.5% as a penalty for uh, over the amount you were early paying. If you are in the fixed rate, you pay 2%. So let me give you an, exa an example. If you are early paying 10,000 euros, you have to pay 10,000 plus 200 euros for, for the penalty. Okay, but you can do this at any time. And am I able to sell the property even if I still have a mortgage on it? Yeah, absolutely. It will be exactly as if there is any, any mortgage at all. So you put it, you, 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 you hire an agency to sell the house. On the closing date, there will be two checks. One will go directly to, the, to your bank to finish to, to pay off the, the, your mortgage. And the other one will be, will be uh, delivered to you on the closing with the net, uh, the selling price minus the, the mortgage amount. Okay, so with the surplus. Okay. What's the biggest advice you would give someone who's interested in purchasing a property in Portugal? For a foreigner to finance a property in Portugal. The banks are more accustomed to foreigner papers. They, are, they feel more, more comfortable approving foreigners here. So I think it's, it's a great moment. It's a window of opportunity because we never know until when these conditions will remain. So uh, one advice would be either if you want to retire in five, 10 years or have a property for investment in Portugal, we can buy this now and then start renting it <clears throat> and, and then with the, with, with the renting cover your mortgage payment. So, mm -hmm. This is a, a, a thing that a lot of clients are, are, are doing. Other two tips are uh, for the visa, for example, if you, uh, when you apply to a visa and you already have a property, you have an address in Portugal, so it helps a lot because you have already invested in the company. When you don't have a property, you have to um, show a leasing of 12 months here in Portugal to, to access this. So it's money, let's say, throw it out. Mm -hmm. When you have a property, you already have your address. So it helps the visa, I think, in my opinion. Uh, and you also want to live in Portugal. Once you're a resident for five years, you can apply for the citizenship. I think this is great and uh, I don't think there is other country that can do this, but for sure Portugal is the, the, ba the best path, the easiest path. So uh, if you are planning to buy in the next six to 12 months, you can schedule your, your video interview with me. I will explain you everything in details to the client and, and ask for the list of documents, pre-approve you, and then you can start your search and find your property in Portugal. Great. Rafael, thank you for giving us a crash course on mortgages. And if you would like to get in touch with Rafael, then email me at info at expatseverywhere.com and check out right here what YouTube things you should binge watch next. Now let's get moving.